starred opposite David Tennant in Dares and even played pilot number three alongside Ben Affleck in Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but after five years away from the stage, Daniel Mays is heading back to his uh, theatrical roots at the Old Vic and he joins us now. And it's funny because I moved all the way through where we've all been for the past 18 months or so. We've spoken to you a few times on yeah. Zoom. It's so yes. lovely to have you It's lovely here. to see you in person. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and how lovely to be talking about theatre. Indeed, yes. I'm going to be at the Old Vic in a production of The Dumb Waiter by Harold Pinter, alongside the magnificent David Thewlis. Yeah. So it's, um, as you mentioned, it's been five years for me, so uh, it feels like a bit of a baptism of fire going back. It's only one act, though. It's only 45 minutes long and there's only five performances. That obviously had nothing to do with <laughs> <laughs> wanting to take the gig. But um, it's great. It's just, I mean... Theatre is an actor's medium, for me, personally. I think yeah. it's a proper workout. And to be part of the Old Vic and their in-camera season, so this is what they're doing. There is going to be an invited, socially distanced audience, but it's also going to be each performance is beamed live. So does that well. change the way... So, I mean, you're in rehearsals right now, so I yeah. imagine knowing that it's not just for the theatre, but it's also for the screen as well. Yes. Is that a different process again? We'll find out this week. Right. Because we, we move into the theatre. I mean, I've never done that before. I guess it's, it's like an NC Live or something like that. So um, I think predominantly, though, we're, we're focusing the performance to camera. Oh. Um, oh, really? I'm sure, the, I'm sure the invited audience are going to be happy. But, I mean, I guess it's a marriage of those two... Two things together. ...forms, really. So it's, uh, it's a new experience for me. Well, the story is two hitmen who are underneath yeah. a supposedly empty cafe waiting for their next job. Yes, they're two professional hitmen. They're very experienced. Uh, they're in a basement in a house in Birmingham awaiting their, their next victim. Sounds like a cheery number, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> but it's, it's classic Pinter. If you're not familiar with his writing and his work, it's a great introduction. You know, it's classic uh, power plays, there's menace, there's a, it's absurd at times and absolutely hilarious. So my character, Gus, is kind of having a sort of existential crisis and he's asking incessant questions about what the meaning of this is and what is actually happening. So, as you could imagine, for a hitman, you're normally just there, turn up, do the job, and don't ask any questions <laughs> at all. So, um, just it's great. I mean, and you know, we did a run through at the end of the first week, and just to sort of be there and do an extended take of something yeah. without anyone shouting cut or action. It yeah. was an absolute... I'd, 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 I'd realised just how much I'd actually missed it. Well, I was going to say that. Do you think that sort of um, every actor should get back to theatre at some point just for, like, a refresh and go and sort of... I, I, yeah, I think so, cos it's, it's the endeavour of doing it over the course of an evening. And yeah. I love the, you know, the, the, when you're sitting around a rehearsal table and working it out. Mm -hmm. and, because, essentially, you are the editor of your own performance, you know? I mean, if you're in a film or a TV show... Um, they can shape the performance any which way they want. Yeah, and yeah. Um, you can do whatever you like. So, you, you have been very lucky uh, because you have been able to work. Uh, yeah. Great shows, Temple and, uh, and Code 404, which well, I think that was one of the first to come back, wasn't it? Code 404, I think, was one of like, the third show to come back mm. out of lockdown. So, I mean, I was, I was really blessed that both Code and Temple got recommissioned. Um, I mean, it was an strange experience because, you know, we're, everyone's wearing masks and we're all doing COVID tests. But, um, I mean, I take my hat off, not just to film and TV, but all you guys here just sort of trying to, you know, keep moving forward and yeah. making sure that content's still being made. It's been a sort of gigantuan effort, isn't it, for all concerned? Oh, massive. So, um, yeah, so Temple and Code 404 are going to be out later in the year. Well, Mark yeah, Strong right. was on here a little while ago, and it's his wife, it's Liza, isn't it? She was Liza exec, Marshall, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, exec producer, uh, who was one of the people that... Essentially, well, I've got my, my sister-in-law at the moment is, uh, is, is making a, a sort of big TV show uh, out filming. And, um, and the COVID stuff is a nightmare. I mean, it's, it's working it all out and the cost of it and how much you put in the budget. But yeah. she was one of the first, wasn't she? Like, yeah, Liza one of the first came out it. with lots of, um, like a blueprint, really, of what to follow. Um, but like you mentioned, Phil, yes, yeah, so much of the budget for these productions has to go on sort mm. of the COVID testing. And, and, and you know, if, if there's an extended period of, sort of quarantining or if it gets cancelled or whatever it is, you know, if, if people test positive. So it's been, it's been difficult, but mm. hopefully it hasn't affected the actual 
No, the quality of the work. I mean, screen... once you get on set and you stand there on your mark in front of the camera, you just have to do the business again. So, um, but it's been, uh, it's been, yeah, a bit of a challenge. Listen, at least you've been able to keep going. That's the important yeah. thing. Um, line of oh, duty. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> <laughs> line of duty. Uh, we've got to talk about that because you said that that was sort of like quite a big turning point in your career. That. Yeah, it was just an amazing role to get, you know. Yeah. I was a huge fan of the first two series, uh, and then when they sent me the script, I mean, I... Did you go, oh, how many words? Like yeah, the dialogue I, mean, I had for one that of those amazing um, interrogation yeah. scenes, didn't I, which was, to this date, still the hardest thing I've ever had to learn. Is it was still he... in there? Or does it just No, get weirdly, I, I never retain dialogue. Shakespeare, I can sort of sometimes remember, but once it's filmed and gone, it's sort of... That was gone. 15 pages long, wasn't it? It was, know? yeah. It was, um, I mean, in a way, that scene was much like doing a piece of theatre. Yeah. We spent the whole day on it and um, went out in Northern Ireland and had a good old drink after we'd finished <laughs> uh, with the lovely Adrian Dunmore and all the gang. So um, I, it was a huge turning point and um, I'm so proud to be part of that show and it's gone on to be this huge juggernaut now yeah. on BBC One. You don't think James Nesbitt's dead, do you? I don't think James I like that theory. Dead. I thought he's got a point. I think he's got um, a point. I've got a, I don't know this. Don't take it as red, but I've got a sneaky suspicion that he might be the main It makes man sense because otherwise you were like what 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 was that scene like when he was there was dead on the dead on the bed. You were like what why yeah, we, didn't, we didn't get a close up did we, we didn't, of, his, no. uh, of his mush. No. <laughs> and why, you know, and why waste him? You know, so exactly. What was no, the point? I mean, James Nesbitt is phenomenal talent, so, you know, Maybe Watch maybe it's just Jed Mercurio dangling the carrot. Who knows? I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't put it past him. I think you're <laughs> he right. Killed me off, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> <Do anything. laughs> maybe you're not dead. Oh no! no well, it, that are. would have to be a prequel. <laughs> then, then, then it will be confusing. <laughs> um, it's really good to see you. Thank you. What we're talking about the here? The dumb waiter. Yeah. Dumb waiter. It's the Old Vic, seventh to the tenth of July. You can either go in person or obviously you can see it. Yes, you um, can get tickets online for each performance. So if you want to see it from the comfort of your own home, that's the way to do it. All right, thank you. Take Pleasure. Care.